Hello everybody, this is Pitch Gold Black here, and welcome back to the Skulls General Reviews episode 10, Damaged. Hello everybody and welcome to my Doctor Who book review of Damaged Goods or Skulls General Reviews episode 10. Yes, it is that time for the concluding episode to set 1 to the Skulls General Reviews, and in this video I will be announcing the times and stuff for the, um, days for the, um, uh, 300 subscriber special, 3 year anniversary uh, special um, thing. Uh, providing if I get this video out on the uh, 25th of January, uh, which is the day I'm recording this, and also um, get it up in time, um, the 3 year uh, celebration videos uh, or submissions from the top 5 Skulls General Reviews episodes um, will be. Um, uh, upload starting uh, of well, depending if I get any of the uh, videos or not, uh, I should be starting to upload um, the top five Skulls General Reviews episodes on the 5th of February, and I think a good deadline will be until oh, let me see, I am going to be saying the 15th of February. Um, uh, so yeah. Um, and, um, and I also going to say that, um, you may or may not want to watch this, um, Skull Shinner Reviews because there's something that I'm going to be going on to a little bit, um, not that this is a spoiler review or anything like that, it's just, um, something that I've got on, but if you, uh, don't want to watch, um, this review simply because of the, um, reason that I'm about to state, and, um, you can, uh, just do a, um, Top five Skulls General Reviews episodes um, that you have watched. If you are planning to do, you know, if you if you were planning to do this top five um, Skulls General Reviews episodes for my 300 subscriber special three year anniversary um, thing. Um, now what? Now what is the reason um, for that? Some viewers may not um, want to watch this review. Um, well, simply because this is an ext extremely graphic Doctor Who book. Um, as you might be able to tell from the cover art, um, and I will be going into detail about why um, or how this book is um, so graphic. So, if you are uh, sensitive to like extremely gory or graphic stuff, or like body horror or uh, disturbing imagery and all of that, if you are easily offended, disturbed, or unsettled by any of that stuff, I would advise against watching um, this review because there's some pretty nasty stuff in this book. Um, and also, um, there may or may not be some things in this video that may be construed as spoilers. I'm not necessarily going to be counting them as spoilers per se because I'm only really going to be talking about um, the deaths that happen in this book. Um, well, I guess there will be tiny, tiny spoilers, but um, just to kind of explain why I didn't necessarily finish this book, um, um, at the time I was reading this the other night, um, so there will be tiny, tiny spoilers in this review, but it's nothing major to the plot, it wouldn't like affect your um, reading or anything like that in any way, but if you wanted to be kind of shocked by um, the deaths in this book, um, uh, I would say it will affect you. Um, uh, if you want to be shocked by the um, deaths in this book, but without further ado, let's finally get on to my review of Damaged Goods by Russell T Davis. So, as you might be able to see, there's quite a bit of glare on this book. That's because it's in this um, uh, protective sleeve. So let me just uh, take that out of the way. Uh, so on the cover art of this book, we have. Uh, the New Adventures, Doctor Who, Damaged Goods, Russell T Davies. Uh, then on the cover for the cover art itself, um, we have uh, a kind of stormy, uh, nighttime, apocalyptic-looking sky above a city with some tree line in front of it. And then in front of that, we've got the graveyard, a gravestone here, and lots of uh, tombstones all around. Uh, I got a bit of grass and a bit of soil right here. Then you've got um, the uh, grave for Simon Jenkins and uh, the monster in this book bursting out of the grave, um, which is called a kappa. And then on the spine of this book, we have uh, damaged goods in orange. 
uh, as you can see there, Russell T Davis, and then the Doc 2 logo down there. Then on the back we have uh, Damaged Goods, an original Doc 2 novel. Uh, wherever this cocaine has travelled, it hasn't gone alone. Death has been its attendant. Death in a remarkably violent and, and, and inelegant form. The Doctor, Chris and Roz arrive at the quadrant. A, trouble, uh, a troubled council block in Thatcher's Britain. These are, there are new, there, there's a new drug on the streets. A drug that's killing to a plan. Somehow the very ordinary people uh, of the quadrant are involved. And so amidst the growing chaos, a bizarre trio moves into number 43. The year is 1987. A dead drug dealer has risen from the grave, and an ancient weapon is concealed beneath human tragedy. But a doctor soon discovers that the things people do for their children can be every bit as deadly as any alien menace. As he uncovers the link between a special child and a, an obsessive woman, and a desperate mar bargain made one dark Christmas Eve. And then with the Doc 2 logo, uh, Russell T. Davis is an award winning TV dramaist, uh, having created the controversial adult soap opera Revelations and the acclaimed BBC children's serial Century Falls and Dark Season. He loves Doc 2 and all television. And down here, you've got cover design by Slater Anderson, cover painting by Bill Donahoe, uh, Prices, uh, which you won't get nowadays because this is quite a pricey book. Um, about thirteen pounds, uh, not thirteen pounds. Um, about twenty twenty-five pounds on Amazon. I was lucky to get this in an eBay bid for uh, sixteen pounds three pence. Uh, science fiction TV times its genre and its barcode. Uh, for the innards itself, we have damaged goods and then a little uh, pencil in number fifty-five up there, uh, which I didn't do. That's just the condition I got this book in. Uh, this was the focus. Well, it probably focus on the YouTube video because it, that happens sometimes. But it does say number 55 up there. And there you've got uh, advertisements uh, for the other Virgin New Adventures from Time Room Genesis all the way up to the Death of Art. And there you've got the New Adventures, Damaged Goods by Russell T Davies. And there you've got Copyright Guff uh, for Mum, Dad, uh, Susan, Janet and Tracy. With thanks to all of those people. Uh, kind of... Russell T. Davis, T. Davis noting who this um, book is for, um, and um, uh, who's it, who it is dedicated to, and at the back of this book we have uh, more blurbs uh, for already published version new adventures, Zampa, Toy Soldiers, Head Games, The Also People, Shakedown, Just War, War Child, Sleepy, uh, Death and Diplomacy, Happy Endings, God Engine, Christmas on, and a Christmas on a Rational Planet. And then if you've got any questions, uh, look, any of you trouble obtaining Doc 2 books in your local shops, kind of uh, message down there. Um, this book is a a 263 page long um, Doc 2 book um, with actual um, uh, appendixes and stuff. Uh, so in a way this book is only um, 200, no it's actually 263 pages long, um, but it's got an appendices uh, and in total it has, uh, let me see, uh, 14 chapters in total and as you can see this book has uh, split its stuff um, into like dates and stuff, uh, it's like 26th of July 1987 as you can see there. So, like, um, I think The Witch Hunters and a few other books, this book um, does have kind of, like, chapter inceptions where, like, um, they're, like, all sorts of chapters, um, within the chapters, in a way, by being books marked with the, um, the dates and stuff. Now, what is the general consensus and my own personal thoughts and opinions on damaged goods? Okay, okay. This is going to be a controversial review because I don't really like this book. Well, I do have more um, that I appreciate than I hate in this book, but I still don't like this book overall. Uh, now, uh, 
I know this book is an utter classic in many people's eyes. I know this is one of the all-time fan favourites of the Virgin New Adventures. There's been quite a few five. There's been a few five stars and a uh, couple four-star reviews. And surprisingly, uh, very surprisingly, um, uh, lots of um, three-star reviews on Goodreads, which is quite pleasant to see because that's roughly what I would um, uh, give it as well. But actually, maybe two stars actually. Um, so yeah, like I said, the book is structured and like um, with like the individual kind of baits and stuff, um, which makes this book all the more um, realistic and is split across 14 chapters. And the chapters are quite evenly spread across the 260 pages. There are some chapters that are quite long, um, like over 30 pages, even 40, nearly 40 pages in some places. Um, so I would say overall the structure to this book is really good. And um, the characters in general are really really good. Um, Simon Jenkins you don't really get to see much of him um, because eventually he turns into the Kappa which I'll uh, go uh, more uh, later on. Um, uh, but uh, the main cast themselves, the Doctor, is really good in this book. Uh, very well characterised by Russell T Davies and same uh, with all of the um, characters in this book actually, I would say Russell T Davies did an excellent job at characterising every single character in this book I would say. I would also say Rosalind Forrester and Christopher Quedge are really good as well. Uh, with um, uh, Christopher Quedge being really good, just like, um, he's got really good characterisation um, in this book and he um, really is shown to be an absolute um, uh, brute not necessarily a brute, but throughout the Virgin New Adventure novels um, and the Virgin stories overall and um, what stories he has been in, he's been established as always this huge kind of um, um, like massive seven to eight foot tall um, described person and in this book there's a quite a funny scene um, where when the Doctor, uh, Roz and Chris himself move into this um, uh, into move into the apartment 43 on in the quadrant um, he tries to go into the bathroom and um, his shoulders are literally banging into every single surface possible <laughs> it's quite funny um, Roz's, uh, Chris's characterization in this book and it is really shown how much of a tall motherfucker Chris really is um, and I was to say he's also got some really good characterization during some things where um, the doctor has tasked him to hunt out and actually buy some cocaine off of the streets um, because uh, the doctor realises something is up with the cocaine and stuff um, which I'll go uh, more into later on um, and I would also say that the ca characterisation of the um, um, all of the characters in this book are extremely realistic especially with the main trio uh, the doctor, Roz and Chris um, simply because uh, they're in this kind of very realistic situation which I'll go more into later on. Um, I would also say that, um, well moving on to the actual kind of um, uh, supporting characters now, there's quite a few um, uh, good supporting characters in this book actually, um, such as there's this um, guy called um, Harry I think. it's. There's two characters in this book called Harry and David who are um, living in this house together. I'm not sure um, whether it's implied that those that these two characters are gay or cohabitating in any way, but um, I think it was um, either David or Harry, or basically um, one of them gets some, and both of them have really good um, characterisation in total. Um, I won't go into that uh, with them too much later on, um, but there is a really uh, a very kind of disturbing um, and somewhat realistic characterization of I believe it was um, uh, David I think I'm not too sure on that but I'll go more into that later on um, and now we're going to be moving on to um, the kind of um, deputy villain of this story um, um, the uh, what's her name Eva Jericho um, Seriously, if seriously, if you thought um, Doctor Who villains couldn't get um, any more um, kind of um, sadistic or kind of evil, if you think like you've experienced like the most um, sadistic 
and craziest um, Doctor Who villain ever, or most craziest and sadistic uh, Doctor Who character ever, just you wait till you read Eva Jericho. She's without question the most sick, twisted, and just disturbing Doctor Who character I have ever read. She's uh, she's all of that, but incredible at the same time, and. Um, She's very well characterised because Russell T Davies implies that she actually has um, voices going on inside her head which um, kind of makes her seem, um, I would guess, kind of mentally insane and maybe a little bit mentally retarded as well. I'm not sure if that is strictly implied in this book but there is a general vibe um, in, well I think it is implied that she is a bit insane but like there's always these voices going on inside her head telling her to do things and telling her to do that. Like, um, like I think she even has in this book this extremely um, sick uh, sexual fetish of like um, cutting up clothes and um, and like returning them to a store and calling them uh, damaged goods. Um, and there would always be this voice uh, there, um, like the evil voice in her head would always prompt her to do this and stuff. And there's a quite a um, quite a jaw-dropping um, scene near the beginning of this book where um, the scene, uh, well, where the voice in her head is effectively pushing her to cut up to go out onto another uh, shopping trip um, and uh, to cut up the clothes and to, um, and to um, send them to the, uh, and refund them and uh, say that they are damaged goods and it's quite graphic to sing because it is implied that she's um, effectively masturbating and arousing herself with um, actually cutting up the clothes. There's like, like there's actually described as sweat being around her, um, well, lady parts. Um, not joking, it is really uh, disturbing um, her character and probably one of the most insane, sadistic and just craziest Doctor Who characters I have ever watched. There's even one scene later on in this book where she poisons um, her butler with rat poison which is just insane and she can get away with all of this because she's like really high up and really famous and um, and everybody will just believe her and she can just get away with whatever the fuck she wants really. She's just crazy batshit insane and yeah a cutting up clothes masturbator <laughs> pretty much and because she's so famous she can get away with it and all and because she has some money she can get away with it all so she is just a crazy sick twisted and just fucking batshit insane character um and even uh tries to rat poison um uh uh her butler at one point and like she even forces she actually forces um her butler to eat the rat poison like she's mixed it in with this food um that she's um given it to um uh she's given to uh her butler and she literally f uh, is and she literally starts forcing the butler to eat the food of the rat poison in it and it's a very uh, disturbing scene in it and she and it is another brilliant scene in which uh, um, it is shown that Eva Jericho is just this sadistic crazy bitch really it's just a fantastically well written scene in my opinion um, from Russell T Davies um, uh, in my personal opinion and you could just like see the sweat glistening off of um, uh, the uh, Russell T uh, not, not off of Russell T Davies' forehead but the butler's forehead and it's an extremely well written scene because all you get to see really is um, uh, Eva Jericho sprinkling some sort of mysterious powder into the butler's food and it is not uh, given away until like after the butler dies what she actually sprinkled into his food so Eva Jericho is just one sick crazy mad and downright brilliant Doctor Who character probably the most sadistic and evilest Doctor Who character I have ever watched um, um, well, probably one of the greatest villains ever actually I would say she's actually up there with Mavic Chen in a way but um, she's not necessarily the main villain of this story um, uh, the main villain of this story is actually 
uh, the Kappa, which is the monster in this book. Now the Kappa is this very interesting um, Doctor Who monster where it's basically this virus that takes over dead corpses and stuff and um, uh, can basically shift and um, and mould its form into whatever it wants really so in a way it's like um, uh, the liquid metal robot from uh, the Terminator movies um, like the T2000 I think it's called um, like the police cop one from um, Terminator 2 if you know what I'm talking about and um, basically takes over the bodies of the dead and whatnot and um, uh, makes them uh, his form basically which is absolutely uh, crazy and is a really good uh, monster and villain overall for um, the character or the monster overall um, and it's given really good characterization and well as well and um, I would say Russell T Davis was a little bit inspired by the Terminator movies for this book in a way I think because um, uh, the Kappa actually has this dimension um, where it just sits and plots like um, this like empty void of a dimension where it just kind of like teleports itself into to actually kind of um, uh, plot and stuff and the way it kind of zips back in uh, in and out of the dimension is kind of like given like um, it does have a really uh, kind of Terminator vibe um, to it um, you know like when in the beginning of every movie the Terminator from the future kind of materialises out of thin air there's like always um, electricity and like a big flash of light and a big meteorite crater and a naked Terminator in the crater if you know what I mean if you've seen the Terminator movies you do know what I'm talking about um, um, but in a way it is, uh, in my head it is kind of um, visually given in that kind of way Um, but without the crater. Um, so yeah, overall the characters in my personal opinion are absolutely fantastic and are brilliant, brilliant, brilliant characters in this book overall. Moving on to um, kind of one of my, uh, one of the actual kind of main um, kind of integral parts of this book and that is its um, goriness. Um, to be honest I would have been tempted to reject it uh, if I was like as a book publisher I would have been tempted to uh, reject um, this book from publication because it is insanely graphic in my opinion this book it is and it really does go too far um, in some places and um, the graphicness of this book it is pretty freaking insane what happens um, it's like at the beginning of this book uh, for example um, a man that sets himself on fire trying to commit suicide and and um, he actually survives and actually goes to hospital um, later on in the book uh, later on in the same chapter um, and um, uh, later on in the same chapter and um, the way it's described it reminds me of um, uh, the thing from the Fantastic Four movies where it's just this big kind of crusty mass but instead of like um, the orange kind of islands on the surface it's kind of like this um, uh, really disgusting charcoal black and and uh, it is described that you can actually see like bits of uh, red uh, flesh and whatnot in like the gaps between the charcoal uh, skin and whatnot so it's really fucking graphic how that is described and the character eventually uh, kills himself by when he's in hospital he literally shoves a syringe needle into the side of his head um, killing himself off and now if that wasn't bad enough um, later on in the same chapter this guy gets uh, mugged and when he gets home he doesn't realize this but um, he actually gets like a huge um, gaping wound um, from uh, the mugger who knifed him like right down between his breasts and it's like this really deep cut and and he realizes that um, the hospital um, nearby would have realized what would have happened to him and um, and he didn't want to get the hospital involved so he literally performed the surgery on himself which is just crazy um, it's like he uses alcohol and stitching and stuff in his bedroom and it is so freaking disturbing this scene because through the whole time he is actually crying through the surgery 
but he doesn't realise it until like ten minutes into this in ten minutes into the scene, so it is extremely graphic. Um, and funny enough, both of these both of these events all happen within the same chapter. Chapter and one. After all of that, the graphicness um, does kind of calm down a little bit, but then um, it kind of uh, uh, goes way, way too far. And at the kind of like um, at page two hundred mark, basically, uh, as you're um, basically whilst um, basically what happens is there's this little boy who is extremely sick. He's cradled in his brother's arms his entire family is watching and his brother and the little boy that is sick in his brother's arms with his entire family watching just crumbles away into bone and dust and to be honest when I was first reading this I was so disturbed by this I I really could just not I could barely take it to be honest actually there was tears in my eyes when I was reading it and it really upset me and was pretty stressful to read uh, to me to be honest because um, it's bad enough because I have a little brother but the thing is my little brother actually has autism um, which is not quite on the same level as being sick but at the same time it was just disturbing I wanted to cry my eyes out that was just the scene uh, where the little boy crumbles away into bone and dust was just freaking horrifying and it nearly made me cry my eyes out and because of that one reason alone I can definitely see that this book won't be reprinted ever because oh that is t far too graphic and this book overall is far too graphic and then uh, in the actual kind of climax I'm not kidding, 11,000 people die all at the same time and at that I was just like, nah fuck it, I'm done with this book, I, I just can't take this book anymore. And lighting cut. Yeah, sorry about that, I forgot to include this in the um, original bulk recording earlier. Um, so yeah, so sorry about the lighting cut, I just, the lighting cut, I just um, forgot to include this in... Um, the um, original batch of recording earlier. Um, but anyways, where was I? Oh yes, I was just about to take. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? Anyways, um, I was just about to tell you guys about um, how realistic this book is. Um, as you would have known from the blurb, the um, uh, Doctor Christen was uh, arrived at the quadrant, um, a housing estate and whatnot, and we've been to flat number forty-three. Um, so yeah, the book is uh, really grounded in realism a lot. It has um, a lot of realistic things in it um, that could happen, like somebody getting mugged, um, somebody trying to commit suicide in a gruesome way, um, a psycho psychotic woman um, uh, indulging in her sexual fetishes, um, and all of that. And even like arson is committed at one point in this um, uh, book. Um, so yeah, and uh, also the fact that it's just an everyday street drug called um, cocaine um, makes this book even the more um, grounded in realism and even more um, down to earth and stuff. It's still got its elements of um, science fiction and whatnot and its uh, dark moments, but it's still grounded in realism and um, uh, whatnot. So that's definitely another positive right there. And cue another lighting change. Um, to be honest, I not necessarily classing as this as a did not finish. I just desperately need to take a break from this book because it was just getting far, far too much for me. Um, to be honest, and now I'm going to be moving on to my own uh, final kind of conclusions on this book. Um, for the kind of first. Um, 95 pages. This book was uh, pretty good. It was very slow paced, however, just kind of introducing like your the characters to the novel and stuff, and kind of like introducing them and getting them kind of um, uh, introduced to the story, like uh, establishing how mad of a bitch Eva Jericho is. Um, and and in that kind of area, it was 
uh, quite a slow paced Doctor Who book and because of that it was pretty grating at some points and I was a little bit bored in some places to be honest so first 95 pages pretty good like uh, 8 out of 10 but extremely slow then from like page uh, 95 um, all the way up until like page 200 uh, and uh, 200 something rather the book for me was absolutely fantastic it really picked up its pace it was really good really engaging and very very addictive and I'd give it like and I'd give that like section of the book like a solid 10 to be honest it was absolutely fantastic and then we have the finale oh god and the book pretty much dies in my opinion oh god it appears Russell T Davis was wanting to try and make uh, the finale seem as epic as possible by introducing t uh, so many elements to it and um, and it just int it just introduces far too many elements. First of all, you've got the capper and whatnot, and his um, thing to do with the cocaine and whatnot, um, which is um, extremely brilliant to see, and I uh, really do like what uh, involvement the capper has with the cocaine. And um, but the thing is, he's got like the c things with the capper going on, Eva Jericho being a crazy bitch, and then something going on with um, voodoo dolls and stuff, and. Um, uh, spoiler, even Unit turns up at the end of this book, which I was uh, pleasantly surprised to see. Um, but again, it just seems like he was trying to cram in far too much into a finale just to try and make it seem like all epic and stuff. And it really, 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 really didn't work out in the end. And the finale was just a confusing mess, in my opinion. It wasn't. It wasn't that good to be honest. It, it, it isn't that good so far to be honest. I mean, I'm still reading. I'm still technically reading this book. I'm just taking a big break from it because the graphicness and the convolution and the convolutity, if that's even a word, a convolutity of the um, or convolutedness of the um, uh, finale of this book just got far too much for me. Seriously, it's just far too much going on in the final uh, part of this book and. In a way, it comes out like that Russell T. Davis is trying too hard. And the finale overall just just comes across as rather sloppy, to be honest. It isn't that good, to be honest, in my personal opinion. Um, so what are my overall conclusions on Damaged Goods? Now, I, I did a post to this on um, Underworld Readers saying I'd give this like a 4.5 out of 10. Um, and um, I'm still tempted to stand by that, but after talking about uh, an extensive time about like the positives and stuff I have with this book, um, I'm thinking of giving this book. Oh, I'm thinking of giving this book a six out of ten. It's first half is. Uh, first 95 odd pages is really good but really slow next um, 105 odd is really um, engaging and like absolutely incredible but finale is just sloppy in a way and it and it goes uh, and it is way 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 too graphic even for a virgin book and seriously if I was like uh, the publisher or like the head of a doc 2 book company or something like that um, uh, and I was to see uh, this book placed in front of me, I would have, um, I might have rejected it actually because it is, oh, it is insane how graphic this book is. It really is just actually insane graphic. I mean, like, 11,000 people do at the same time. A little kid, no long, no older than 10 years old, his entire family watching just comes away into bone and dust. A guy sets himself on fire, later killing himself with a by shoving some engineer into his head. Some guy can just like commence some surgery on himself but not realising it was crying the whole time. It is just insane and so so disturbing this look in my own personal opinion. It is just completely and utterly insane this look and overall it's not the best. It's a bit of a mess to be honest in my opinion. I I didn't come out um 
uh, enjoying damaged goods overall. In my opinion, it is by far and beyond definitely not the greatest Doctor Who book in the world, and I can't really see what the hype is that was about it. There was um, far more in it that I appreciated than I hated, but still, overall, it wasn't that amazing of a Doctor Who book. Um, so overall, I would give damaged goods a 6 out of 10. Finally concludes the Skulls General Reviews Episode 10 and the Skulls General Reviews Set 1. If you'd like to comment, subscribe, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the first 10 episodes of the Skulls General Reviews. I had a lot of fun making of them, it's been one hell of a journey. I feel like I've produced some of the best top 2 content I've ever produced, um, has been produced in these first 10 episodes and I hope you guys enjoyed these first 10 episodes as well. The Skulls General Reviews is far from concluding. Far, far, far from concluding. Far from concluding. Um, so like that, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Damage Goods. And I also hope that you are participating in my Top 5 Skulls General Reviews episodes, videos. So you have until the 5th of... Uh, so you have until the 25th of January today until the 15th of February to upload um, videos and stuff and uh, or to private message me your top five videos and stuff um, um, so yeah and I think I'll start uploading the videos at about um, February perhaps but I'm not too sure on that but anyways this video has gone on for long enough so like for a comment subscribe I hope you guys have Skulls General Reviews episode 10 of Damaged Goods by Russell G Davies Please like, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Pitch Skull Black, dematerializing.